guys, I just got a violin repair. It's basically a service, especially if you're a professional player like this player. It's something that needs to get done uh, fairly regularly, like once every one to two years. Some players give their instruments such a hard workout that they actually need a service after six months. So this is the violin. It's uh, an old uh, German violin, probably maybe around... Um, 80 to 100 years old. It's got a beautiful one-piece back and uh, yeah it's generally a very nice instrument uh, but it's gotten a big workout. You can see here uh, a lot of the edges are worn so I got lots of bumps and bruises which I'll have to fix up. It's obviously a rosin build-up. The fingerboard needs planing. You, you can see some nice grooves worn in. The pegs will need just a, a service. Over the years, the bridge has gotten a bend, so I'm going to have to put on a new bridge as well. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plane the fingerboard. Now you've seen me plane fingerboards before, so this will be the short version. Okay, let's have a look, see how this fingerboard turned out. I am very happy with that. Now I just have to glue the nut back on. Beautiful. Okay, so now I am ready to give the instrument a bit of a clean. And I especially want to really clean the edges that have gotten those bumps. Uh, there is one other interesting thing. And that is a mark right here where the varnish has been taken off. And I think there was this trend going around to use perfume to clean strings. So perfume contains alcohol and a lot of varnishes are alcohol soluble. So I think that the player may have tried to clean strings, put a drop of alcohol in on there by accident didn't see it and it just cleaned, like it just took off a lot of the varnish. I've had that happen before many years ago. It was quite a challenge. Uh, so don't use alcohol or perfume on your strings. I sometimes do it, but I'm very, 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 very careful to protect the varnish. Especially if you've got a nice instrument, you know, you, you basically end up with a horrible mark. Imagine if this was like a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar instrument where the varnish is actually sacred. The, all, all the varnish would have come off. That's that's kind of not not good. The violin that I discovered it on, uh, that I fixed it on years ago, was an Australian uh, violin, and it had a soft varnish, and it literally stripped it back to the wood. It was just clear wood. It's incredible. I'll get started on cleaning. I'm, I'm going to use a little bit of my own cleaner that I've uh, that I've made. That should get off some of the rosin and then I'll move to just water. Uh, water is really effective, water and a little bit of an abrasive. It can only be done by a specialist because every varnish is different and, uh, and kind of sacred. Okay, there's, uh, you can see uh, the edge is worn off here too, so I'm gonna have to do a bit of retouching here. And then all around the edges down the bottom, they've really gotten a, had a hard life. This is interesting. Uh, see, now that I've cleaned the instrument, the drop that fell on there has mostly removed the upper dirt layer. So that's super, super lucky. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a while and uh, then I'll have to do some retouching and polishing. <laughs> 
Now this is how you look after the pegs and make sure they don't get mix, mixed up. So you really can't get it wrong, nice and easy. Alright, it's a late afternoon on the weekend, but I have to get this violin finished for tomorrow. Um, I've actually been doing some painting in the shop, getting it looking good. The paint was getting really tired. I'm going to have to do the same in my workshop which is going to be crazy. I have so much stuff here. In the shop it's a lot easier and it's looking nice. Um, I'll show you soon. Anyway, um, so the violin is basically ready to polish. I've, I've also I've got to put a bit of um, varnish around the edges again. I've taken a little bit of the varnish off. Most of that was replacement varnish anyway, just to make it look really good. Uh, then I have to do a bridge and I'm actually going to fit the bridge first because then I can do all the varnish work and I don't, I can, while I'm waiting, I can keep cutting the bridge. So I'll do that first. So I've got to find a nice bridge. I just want to work uh, with this height here. I had actually done the last bridge. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. It's 26, 27 millimeters. That's um, the perfect neck uh, fingerboard projection. If you don't know what fingerboard board projection is, it is how the fingerboard projects up towards the bridge. So it is, fingerboard projection is basically where this ends up, like if you continue the fingerboard, it ends up here. That's just under 27, 26 and a half. 27 is kind of ideal. Uh, sometimes even 28 for certain instruments, but, uh, but 27 is definitely very good. So what's important about the bridge is that, that that it's nicely balanced out. The area down below and the area above needs to be nicely balanced. That's why I, you know, I'll, I'll use different heart placement here. Uh, so the high heart, which is this one here, is much higher than the low heart. And you, you can see that if I lay the two over the top of each other, just gonna do the rough fitting. I will continue fitting the bridge until it fits perfectly to the top plate. Okay, this is getting very close now. Just a little bit more to go. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I have to just mark the height and the curvature. Fantastic. So next I have to thickness the bridge, but I want to get some varnish around these edges because I have to do some polishing a bit later so I can get the strings on as soon as possible. So I'm going to do a little bit of varnishing just around the edges here. Now with the varnish, each instrument is totally unique and different. Uh, violin makers will use very different recipes uh, of varnish. Some use oil-based varnish, some use spirit varnish, and uh, they also have different level of hardness. And uh, so I have to, I really have to look at how a varnish reacts and and what kind of varnish it is to know how I treat it. So the the cleaner that I use work quite well. To just remove some of the rosin and then use water but there are some some instruments where you just couldn't use water there are other instruments where you just couldn't use cleaner it would take off the varnish so you just have to be very very careful to me the varnish is sacred so I really do what I can to preserve as much of the original varnish as possible but these edges especially on the top plate are really worn I don't actually quite understand it they're very bumped and worn so the player might might be doing something that's causing that. So when they come in, I'm going to ask if there's something they could change in their habits to just protect their instrument a bit better. Sometimes it's just a little thing in the in 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 the habit of what you're doing with an instrument. So I'm going to let this dry and uh, back to cutting the bridge. Good morning. So today I'm going to get this violin finished. A lot of the varnish around the edges has dried, so I'll be finishing polishing the instrument. This spot here turned out actually 
really quite well like the the little circle so there's nothing I have to do there which is great then I'm gonna adjust like the nut up here to make it lower so I give the whole instrument a polish of course I've got to finish the bridge so Okay, so now I have actually finished thicknessing the bridge. I've just got to carve the fine details. This is kind of where the artistry comes in for a violin maker, but also getting it this right is quite important for the sound as well. And the other thing I'm, I will have to do is some work on the bow. So the bow actually needs some silver winding and a leather, so you can watch me do that. But for now, I will finish off this bridge. Okay, that is nearly done. Just gonna do the string spacing. With my stamp and then just putting the graphite in the grooves and that's just pencil so this is ready I'll put it aside I'll actually put it aside to work with later so now I have to get into the polishing of the violin here it is and uh, I'll get my polish cloth and bits and pieces ready it's always easier to polish when uh, a violin's been really well cleaned See, it's, I've, I've hardly done anything and it's already starting to look good, but I, I still got to do a fair bit more polishing. Over the years, the varnish just gets tiny little cracks in it. And so this polish is all about closing those tiny little cracks to preserve the instrument. You do quite a different way of polishing the famous old Italian instruments. It's not such an additive because you don't want to add much more um, varnish to them. So these days, they use like a, a preservation wax. It's a lot softer than the actual varnish and comes off a lot easier. But uh, these instruments here, it's all about uh, making sure that they're hardy and work well and that the varnish can sustain another couple of years of beatings. Here it's also uh, about integrating the varnish. I, I put a bit of extra varnish around the edges. So I want to integrate that with the the varnish from the instrument so at the moment if you look carefully you should be able to see some lines where I put the new varnish on yeah there's sort of a faint line and I want to get rid of that and uh, kind of make it part of the rest of the varnish so I'll do a tiny bit of sanding there as well but for now I'm just just to get it started I'll just do a bit of polishing All right, I'm gonna have to let that dry a little bit. Uh, I kind of really like the edge work on this instrument. The edges are a bit thicker, but yeah, I think I think they're quite nicely made. It's not your usual style. All right, I'm gonna hang this up to dry now. Okay, I'll have to have a look at the bow now. Okay, so I'm gonna take this bow apart, take all the hair out and things like that. Um, then I've got to give it a bit of a clean. Okay, so I managed to get everything apart. Uh, it was a little bit tricky. Uh, the ring was quite easy to get off, but the slide was really hard. I actually had to heat the whole frog up to get that to work, which is so frustrating. I mean, come on, bow makers, make sure that, you know, people can get the slide out again when rehairing. You know, like uh, if you can't get the slide out, like if it's fully stuck, you literally have to break it and make a new one. Great, so I've got to clean the uh, these areas. Um, here, uh, I've got to give the whole bow a clean. I have got to take off this thing. I'm gonna do a new silver winding. This is interesting. They put down some kind of plastic and that's probably why the other silver winding came off. It's not such a good idea. It's literally just like sticky tape on there or something. That makes the uh, silver vulnerable to coming off. All right, so um, I'll put some new silver winding here, but I've got to give this stick a bit of a clean. It's looking a lot nicer. So the silver winding is a bit tricky. I, I do it by hand. Some people have like a little spool thing and that can work too. Just got to re-drill this really tiny hole that you insert the silver wire into. There's just a tiny hole here. Time for the silver winding. So getting this started is a really tricky bit. This is just super tricky, getting it right. You also got to keep a really good tension on here. 
Okay, that is actually looking really nice. So I've just got to fuss the rest of the silver here and I've got to make sure that my whole silver roll doesn't unwind in the process. I'm just going to put some sticky tape on it. That means I can cut this without any worries. There we go. The rest of this is stuck down. Some, some of the leather will keep it down as well. I'm literally using some glue and yes, it's actually super glue. Not something I normally use, but it's very handy. That's looking really nice. So I'm just gonna do a, um, do a bit of sanding just on the edges here and do some of the final polishing. I'm using 800 grade sandpaper, which is very fine. Just to even this out a little bit, just makes a tiny bit less abrasive. Yeah, that's integrating really beautifully now. There's still a tiny bit of a line showing just where I retouched just down here. So I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll polish a little bit more than I'll let it dry and I have to do some more sanding once it's dried. Also getting very keen to uh, get the bridge and strings on there. The rest of the instrument's looking amazing. Before I do the sanding next time, I will just adjust the nut height here. That way there's no sticky varnish while I do that. It's also time to put the pegs back in. Okay, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I've got to glue a paper strip onto the bow because I don't want to waste the silver underneath. It doesn't make sense to put silver underneath the bow leather. So I'm just going to instead do a little strip of paper and that will build it up to the same thickness as the silver. So there's that. Now I've got to get the bow leather ready to glue on. And I've got to get the violin ready to put on the strings. But I might, I might dedicate myself to finishing the violin because I can do this a little later. So now I'm just gonna pop the pegs back in, put a bit of um, peg paste, make sure that they move nice and smoothly. I just wanna get this little section finished so that I can put the end pin in. Now I'm just going to lower the nut get it to the correct height. That's very important. It really helps playability. And I actually measure that. A lot of times I can do this by feel, but I've just been measuring lately just to make sure I get this exactly right for players. So I'm using a little feeler gauge. For the G, I'm going down to 0.4 of a millimeter. And for the E, it's 0.25 of a millimeter, so it's very close to the fingerboard. Also, this um, nut is actually quite soft, so the strings might cut into it a little bit. Might go a tiny bit higher. That looks very good. So I just want to do one final adjust here. Most of the violin is ready to put strings on. I just want to do the tiniest bit of sanding. I'm just going to do a tiny bit of fine sanding here. I just want to get rid of this little line. All right, just polish over this area. I'm not going to put new varnish on this polishing cloth because otherwise, or, or new metho, otherwise it'll dissolve too much of this area. So these edges look so much better than they did originally. Okay, now it's the exciting moment where I put on the strings and uh, then I'm just gonna let it settle in and after lunch, I will try out the instrument. This will be exciting. So the player is uh, a professional as well as a teacher. She's been quite busy over the last few years so she hasn't quite had the time to do as many services as she'd like to. And I was actually the last person to service the instrument a few years ago, but I think she'll be super happy with this. I believe, yeah, I fitted this sound post uh, quite a few years ago. Just make sure that everything still works. I'll just do a very quick sound post check. That's good. I'll, I'll do more of it, adjust later. That's looking great. I am literally going to hang that up and uh, do the final adjustment and playing after lunch. I'll just let it settle in now. Uh, after lunch, I'll also do this bow leather and then do the bow right here. Okay, so I'm back from lunch and uh, I've got to finish this bow right here. So here we go. So right now, 
I am just feathering the edges of the leather so that it feels nice and smooth on the bow. This here, feather over a long bit so that it can overlap really nicely. You'll see in a minute. As you can see, I'm working on the, on the edges of leather here. This looks great. Just gotta glue this on. I'm gonna double check that it fits nicely. Oh yeah, that's, that's gonna be amazing. Just marked in the starting spot here. One other thing I'm going to do, just just here where the thumb goes, I'm just gonna just make a tiny bit of a divot so that the leather is a bit lower here. It's just more comfortable for the thumb. Taking this down just the tiniest bit. And uh, players tend to really appreciate it because it makes it just a bit gentler on the thumb. So I use a thin strip of glad wrap to go over the top of this. I've actually cut this off myself. There we go, that's looking good. I've got to get on top of this rear hair now. So I've got to clean the silver. So now I've got to fit the wedges. Okay, that's looking fairly good. Another wedge. So this is the spreader wedge that I'm making. So that can just stretch and I am going to do the final touch on the instrument now. Okay, I guess we want to put the chin rest back on. Might try and soften that out just a tiny bit. This actually sounds really nice. I'm very happy with it. And I think the violin's about to get picked up. So I've just got to put rosin on the bow and we are good to go. Okay, that's looking really nice now. The hair's still a tiny bit wet, but that's working beautifully. And I'm super happy with the violin. It's looking great. Anyway, the client picked up her instrument. She was super happy. It was sounding really nice too. I was really happy with it myself. Now this is something pretty normal. If you're a professional player, you really need to get your instrument serviced every year. Like if you're an orchestra player, absolutely, like every year, like clockwork. It's always worth booking in ahead, especially with a, a professional maker. They often get quite busy. Then often the instruments need their fingerboards plain. They need a clean and polish. Probably a set of new strings. Just all the basics that need to get done. Yeah, maybe a bow rehair and that kind of thing. And it just makes your instrument sound and work so much better again because I mean your instrument is like your voice and you kind of want to look after it great well thanks so much for watching so there you go you watched me playing the fingerboard clean the instrument there was that little patch I got a little patch of varnish problems yeah that just cleaned off which was great i did all the edge work to really clean up the edges and make them look good and put varnish on there again also a new bridge uh, adjusting the sound post and we i did the bow silver like the silver winding on the bow the bow leather and of course the bow rehair and like I said, that's quite a normal thing. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps you look after your instrument better. Make sure you like the video. That kind of helps me. And also subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell. That way you find out every time I post a new video. Anyway, keep making beautiful music. It's always great having you guys watch. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.